that man. Welcome everybody to video five of Being Innovator with Dynamic Pages. If you're joining us new, we are going step by step to build a dynamic, a smart record page from start to finish. So watch each one of these videos, then share your progress online and get a chance to win some fun prizes. All right, so in video four, we looked at how we could make our page more dynamic based on the device someone was using to view the record page. In video five, we are gonna look at how we can make our page more dynamic based on the user. Who is the user that is looking at this record page and how can we show different information based on what they need? All right, so I'm super excited to hear from architect admin evangelist, Leanne Rimmel about just how we can do this. Thanks, Rebecca, and thanks for joining us for our next video. So in our last two videos, we have done two things on how we're filtering and building these pages. First, we decided what fields were gonna be displayed based on information from a record. So we use that page value to filter whether or not we're gonna show specific fields. Then in the next video, you went through and you decided what components were gonna be visible based on what device a user was viewing. So would they see a component or not may depend if they were on their desktop or on a mobile device. Now, those are two really valuable ways to think about building these dynamic pages and making this fine-tuned user experience. Today, I'm gonna to show you another way you can do that, which is to filter based on information from your user record. So sometimes you might want to choose what fields or field sections or components are gonna be available based on information from your user record. Information like the profile, maybe the division or the role that they're in. So today we're gonna go through and see how you can do that. And we're gonna say, show specific fields in our field section based on our user profile. So let's dive in and take a look. We're back in Sunshine Chocolates on our project page. And I just wanna show you the fields we're gonna be working with. You can work with whatever fields work for you. I've got a warehouse status and warehouse notes fields that are added to the object, but they're not on the page layout at all yet. And I wanna make those available just to my warehouse employees. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go into App Builder here on Edit Page, and I wanna make sure that our warehouse manager and everyone who's using this in the warehouse can access these warehouse specific fields. This is how I'm gonna optimize what's on the page. So I'm back in App Builder, our favorite place to be. And on the left, I've got my components that are available and my fields that are available. So let's click into fields. Again, we're gonna add that field section. Now this is a components. You can add it anywhere that you can add components in your page. So for this, we're gonna label it as well. We're gonna call it warehouse details. I definitely recommend naming your field sections. I mean, it'll help you know what you're working with, what that field section means, and it's really a good adoption tool as well. Now I'm gonna drag and drop those two warehouse fields. Now you can use whatever fields you're working with here. These are my two custom fields that I've added, warehouse notes and warehouse status. Now I'm gonna click back into that section and set the component visibility. So first I am gonna filter this based on a page value, which we did before. I'm gonna filter this so it's only showing warehouse status for customers. Now I'm gonna go into advanced filter types. So I'm adding two filters. And on the second one, I clicked advanced. And now I can click into that user option on advanced. And I can start to look at all of the different options that are available to me to filter on user information. I'm going to filter this on profile because I have profiles, custom profiles that have warehouse in the name. And that's how we're designating our warehouse users. So I've added that profile name and now I'm gonna just give it the operator contains and say, if the profile name contains warehouse, then that's, we wanna make sure that we're showing this component, but only then. Now, because I added two filters, I can see I've got my filter logic at the bottom and I can choose, here's our filter logic, maybe any of them are true. In this scenario, we wanna show this when all are true. So let's go ahead and save and go back. Now, I'm not viewing this as a warehouse user, I'm viewing this as an admin. So when I go back, I'm not gonna see that new warehouse section because I didn't add it for my profile name. So let's go ahead and swipe over to our warehouse user, Deshaun, and see what this experience is like for him when he logs in and views the exact same project record page. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the page here since we just made this change. 
And now I can see at the top here who I'm logged in as, and I've got that new in the details area, uh, warehouse details section, and those two fields that I added. So those are some really simple tips on how you can start to think about how do you fine tune these pages based on what the information's contained on the page, based on where your users are viewing it, maybe what they're doing when they're viewing it, and based on who those users are, because then you can start to build these individual pages that serve a lot of purposes at your company. So I'm really excited to see all of the pages that you're working on and building and thinking about how do you filter on different users, maybe different user profiles. So for that, you could create another user with another user profile. And how are you filtering on other information on your page, including those dynamic uh, page filters for fields and defining that page behavior based on who's viewing the page. Notice we didn't have to go through any assignment steps or do record page assignments or profile assignments. So it was a really lightweight way to optimize the page. So that's all for today. I can't wait to see all of your work and back to you, Rebecca. Awesome. Seems like the possibilities for how we can customize App Builder are endless. Thank you so much, Leanne, for showing us how we can make our page dynamic based on our user. So let's talk about my three key takeaways for this video and starting with how, you know, we can display components for certain users by filtering on any of those user record fields. For example, profile. So cool. Also, once we start to have all of these different components that are filtering dynamically, we really need to test and adjust the filter logic to make sure that we are showing the right components um, when we want them to. Lastly, we should be thinking more and more about how we can design one page to serve multiple purposes with user-based dynamic filters. Long gone are the days where we have separate pages for different profiles, right? Cool, so now it's your turn. We wanna see how you can make your page dynamic based on the user. So for this um, exercise, share a screenshot of you logged in as your user and what that user sees on the record page. Cool, and then we want you to share that on Twitter using the hashtag beaninnovator and the hashtag sweepstakes to enter to win. And all entries will have to be completed and tweeted to us with the hashtag by 10 a.m. Pacific time, May 20th, 2020. So restrictions do apply, so see you the rules for details. And then if you wanna get a deeper understanding of um, user access and visibility rules and things like that, definitely check out the security module in the trail mix um, for you to follow along and learn more. All right, so that was video five. Next is our very last video, video six of Be an Innovator, where we will learn how to activate and implement and really roll out that new page to our users. See you then. Awesome at me.